Hello everybody and welcome to Beyond Galactic Science. At the end of the last episode we'd got some the key and we'd been going around sort of uh, just having a look around the place a bit I suppose and actually now I've got this bow enchanted. I've been back home a few times but I'll just get the bow enchanted up here and see if I can get this take out this skeleton who will shoot me like crazy if I don't. Uh, not bad to get out there a bit nearer. Most things just fall down here and drop dead. And I've also been around and I've actually picked up some sheep. Well, a sheep, a pig and a cow. Now, we've already got a cow from before. I've also got some mobs as well. In, and I also picked up a squid, strangely enough. It's basically going around here. There are quite often there's one or two which actually float around here. Animals I'm talking about as opposed to mobs. There's plenty of those around. Just go around a place like this, and there is actually, if you do ever need it, because you can't put any blocks down. There was actually an anvil here, I think. Strange place for an anvil, but that would actually then give you power to. Oops, try again. Can I get this? It's creepy. Yes, I can. Good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back home. Now there's two ways to go back home. If either we can do it there. The sort of, uh, I'm not sure which way we'll describe this as. Is that bedrock? My goodness, it is too. We can either use the TARDIS to go back home, or we can simply take the teleporter here and right click it and start teleportation, which is the one I'm going to do. So we're now back at base where I've actually set up in the early days the, the dialing devices, all the RF tools, mattress receivers, and transmitters. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put down the TARDIS. Now to do that, what we do is we take the TARDIS kit, which I think is in my bag now. It is. And right click it. Like that. And I want it around about in front of the front door, probably around about here. Now, when we go into the TARDIS, we have to go around the back, actually. I think if I remember rightly, the door is on the other side like this. So we can right-click the door. And now we're in the TARDIS. Um, I haven't actually finished the last quest off, did I? I didn't actually do that. But you'll notice that the charge porter got charged up again. And that got charged up from those RF entanglers. What I intend to do in this series... Now I can actually take my helmet off, by the way. Or at least I can take my oxygen off. Because that's not going to go down while we're in the TARDIS. So we don't need any oxygen in the TARDIS. So let's have a look at what's this thing. This is the front side of the TARDIS here. And they've got a series of controls on here. These are flight controls. That's the facing wheel. So we actually need to reverse the facing wheel here because I want it to face the other direction. And here is the sonic screwdriver. So we can take out the sonic screwdriver. And I think if we shift right click this, yes, there we go, it changes the schematic. So that one's in mode schematic and it would actually create a medium sized corridor this one here is in dismantle this one is in link and target is not set and the last one is reconfigure and i think we then go back to uh, a schematic again so we could actually make a schematic here so we could bah. what i'm going to do let's create a first of all let's create a library so more of these controls down here. What have we got? We've got the X controls up here and here. And these are flight controls. But basically, when you're flying, you have to flick these things over. And this is the uncoordinated flight mode. This is the one we actually, I think we want that first. But we'll go and check that out in a minute. And here is the room deletion control and the coordinate guesser. So we can basically right click this coordinate guesser here. And then it tells us we're on the moon, which is great. The X is 4 and the Y is 83 and the Z is 193. Should we go and check that? In fact, let's go outside again. Let's right click that. And then we come back outside. So we're around about here. And if I press F3, we should see what our coordinates are. So X is minus 12, Y is 64, and Z is 179. So it's not quite right. Let's go back in again. And you can also, I think, if you've got multiplayer, you can shift right click the door. And now it's set. Uh, it will only open for its owner. 
and this one will open with for its owner and people with keys and this one will not open at all so you can go along here doesn't open door is locked and the other one the next one is open for all well there's only me so we'll just open that allow it to open for all i'll turn off f3 because we don't need that anymore what did it say on the coordinate I guess for the Y? I thought the Y was a bit strange. 83. Well, that's a bit high up. Never mind. Now here we've got what we the rooms we can create. So this is the the back side as it were, I think. So the first thing we need to create is a room. So we right click this button up here and it changes to rooms. So here we can create a big chamber. Do that again. Medium sized farm, which we will create fairly soon, a medium chamber and a library. So that's what we're going to create first. Actually, I will tell you what to do. Yeah, let's create a library first of all. We can always delete it afterwards. And right click this here, and that should. Ah, yes. I have to put the I have to put the Sonic Screwdriver back in the slot here, and then take it out again. Now it will create a library. So we basically got one passageway down here, and here we're at our library. And basically, the library tells you how to control. In fact, you can go up as well. You can see what we've got up here. So they've got more ways to go out, more passageways, like that, and the same again. And this is actually where you can see outside. And what you can see outside is, well, just space at the moment. So let's come down here. And this, by the way, is the room deletion control here. Room control panel. And I think if you shift right click it, it will, in, in the right mode, in the dismantle mode, it will actually delete the room. So, right, here we've got the, sort of the user guide for the TARDIS, as it were. And here is flight. So, let's have a look at what we can do with the flight. And that's the first menu. Let's actually, let's click the menu. I think we can right click the menu. That's all right. So, instruction codex. So, now we then right click flight and we're in the flight mode. And what we then do is we go right to the console. Let's have a look at the console next. And then we've got the four different consoles here. So let's have a look. Then you've got the four sides, so the front side. Let's right click that. I keep left clicking it. It's not so useful. So we get about here and we can then sort of read this. So we've got the quantum handbrake, which is on purple on the left hand side here at the bottom. Then we have the speed lever. And we, for the first time, we actually need to get XP. And then the absolute flight control sets the absolute flights in or out. That's presumably if you want to just go to a specific place or move left or right or up or down a bit, you can use the relative ones. And the flight controls these buttons, you have to press when they're going. And then the gauges, I didn't think they're actually completely up to date with this or slightly different. We dealt with the facing wheel here, this is the red one, so which way it will uh, land when it stops. And the screwdriver generator generates a new screwdriver or absorbs one of the Arctron... One foot Arctron energy. Okay. So I presume you need to create, have some Arctron energy to create that. So the next one is the right hand side. And this is where we started here. We've got some X controls here. So these are the ones which change your um, coordinate system. And it says the first, like, the latter levers are for smaller changes. And the wheel and the first two levers are for huge changes. A good question as to which those represent. The coordinate guesser, we've looked at that already. Then we've got all uncoordinated flight, I'll just move the thing a bit there, which is out when it's drifting and coordinated flight when we're inside basically if you're going to travel somewhere you coordinate it flight controls those are the ones you have to press and flick over when they're at, when you're flying and the green one is the stabilizer but we need to get to level seven of the screwdriver before we can or the or the tardis before we can reach that so then the left hand side again i right left clicked it the left hand side is basically the temporal primer in the middle that's the basically the how we take off 
The Z controls are the green ones, and that's just determine what your Z position is going to be. The exterior sensors is not doesn't actually exist yet until we get to the TARDIS level five. Bookmark slots. This is where we can save our um, locations where we want to go to. And then we've got, oh yes, that's the saving and loading is the yellow one. And the two green ones up just above it are the to store and load the bookmarks. And then the little brown ones we have to flick as we're flying along. And then the back side, if I get that right here, is where we've been to, to actually create this room. So we've got the helmet regulator on the left hand side at the bottom. And just outside that we've got the button to control day or night. Flight controls again are those you have to flick as you're going along. The red one is a dimension lever which allows us to say which dimension we're going to go to. Before we go to any dimensions, we're going to get the TARDIS up to at least, I think, a level, level 7 or maybe even higher. And the green ones, as we've seen already, are to create rooms and corridors, which we're going to be doing fairly soon as well. So. And the yellow one here beside the blue one, the land, okay, the blue the blue one's a landing pad. So it'll, if it's out, it will try to land on the landing pad. And if it's in, it won't. Okay, and then the ground control, whether it's try, is going to land on the ground or not. And we'd expect it to land on the ground, wouldn't you? I'm not quite sure what that means. And the dark green ones are the Y coordinates. The, the, the coordinating system is actually quite tricky. So we'll look at that next. Okay, we've basically got X, Y, Z in the coordinates. It's as simple as that. Now, next one we got is takeoff. We're going to maybe take off today. I think probably we will do. So, we've got what we've got to do is we've got to set the coordinates, which I don't think we need to do, because we should be able to land where we are. Activate the temporal primer, engage the helmet regulator, and disengage the quantum handbrake. Those are the four steps we've got to do. Well, we'll only do three. I think we'll just drift to start with, because that's the next one along the list. All right, and the list here is drifting. So it's a good way to train, so that's what it says. And then you can also re-change re your direct destination when you're finished as well. Okay, and if well, if you miss the the um, the controls, the flight controls in flight, you either get damage, and this is the damage repair. We're going to have a look at that in a short while. But I think we've got to build a few things first. So let's build first of all the lab. So we have to make one of these temporal labs, and the temporal lab will actually make allow us to make this chrono steel, which is an iron ingot goes into there and comes out as a chrono steel ingot. Dalicum, Dalicum, Dalek Anium, I would say, is one for gold. So we have to make that one as well. And to actually build anything, Contron, these are basically from diamonds and ender pearls. I've actually got quite a few of these from doing the. Um, the moon bases and the and I did one Mars base as a dungeon as well. We've got temporal dirt. I ain't sure exactly what this is. We'll have to find out. And we've got a name tag so we can name things. It's just a piece of paper comes out of here. And then we've got tools. So we've got the sonic screwdriver as we can see. And then we'll click that one. And as it says, it's its primary tool. And then it'll give it its mode. So it doesn't actually tell us that much about it. We can change the style of it, I think. By inserting to the engine and pressing the button on the right cycle through the available designs. Okay. We've got decoration. A decorator. This thing here, I believe. Yes, it's used to change the si internal bits of the of the TARDIS. The gravity lift. This is the 
the sort of the mm, I suppose it's like the just the elevator in open blocks. I'll have to get into doing that one sometime. The Arcton batteries. Again, we can actually make these, but we have to use the other items. Roundels. Now, roundels are interesting. This allows us to connect um, basically everything together. So, for example, if we've got Ender IO conduits and things, we can connect all of those together without having to run pipes all and cables all through the through the TARDIS. So these basically like little access points. Uh, what have we got next? A landing pad. We probably will be make a landing pad. Because then we can actually land on somewhere sensible. Instead of just landing on the roof or somewhere like that. And then we've got the engine. As we've seen that before. And we actually, this is where you actually give people permissions as well. To let people to do things like that. And then you can upgrade it as well. So you, these are basically the upgrade slots. Well, maybe try that sometime. What else have we got? T TPM, prevention matrix. So that actually acts like the opposite of a landing pad. Okay, and the credits at the bottom. So who's done what in this one? So that's the library. Right, let's go out. I'll see what else we've got. We've got the front door there, and all of these things here basically don't exist yet. And down here we've got a little lift, so if we press shift we fall down. And then we come to the engine area. That's the temporal engine. If I, I think I right click that button there. Yes, it shows you the, the different bits and pieces here that we've got. So this this requires chronosteel to repair. And some of these, I think, will require... That's Contron. What else is this one? Dalek, Dalek Anium. Dalek Anium. And then we have some buttons here. Oops, a bit too fast with the thing. So, so this is then, you can change the... I think we can right click this. Tentish, main, full. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but there we are. Okay. So that would actually then change. It says it's got a warning there. And this would be the different users. So there's only one user on here, that's me. So, And then this button here, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So I've got modify permissions. And I've got rooms to modify rooms roundels transmat recall recolor what else have we got recolor and fly and spend points so presumably you can push these in and out if you want to stop prevent somebody doing that okay and the next side of this was the the powers, I think. Let's have a look. Temporal engine. This is the upgrade slots. And at the moment, we've got nothing to upgrade here. It says unspent gauge point zero. And then you could put them on the energy for the, is that the temporal engine. I've got to find a lot of this out myself. So let's have a look. What else have we got? That we're done. And here, what have we got here? This is the, oh, that's the screwdriver permissions. So I presume you put your screwdriver in one of the, uh, put it in this hole here, and then you've got permissions. That one's lights. TARDIS lights. The TARDIS is all lit up, so there are no mobs that will spawn inside the TARDIS as well. So that's landing pad lockdown, and interior, interior layers. Yeah, interesting. I'm not exactly sure what everything does on this yet. I'll have to find out. And that's the style button here. I think this is where you change its style. So we can actually right click that one. Yes, there we go. Different styles of um, screwdrivers. Well, I'll have the one I've got already. It looks pretty smart. Okay, so next thing. If you come to this thing and press space, we should just go up one level like this. 
that's the only place that that is you can of course jump down like that and take full damage if you haven't got the full protection up or fly up right now let's have a look what do we have to set on here i'm going to take a little pause for the time being this is actually if we right click here of course it says this is x4 and this is the dimension moon and the y83 and then we want to come around here like that and then z193 well you do remember we need to build something let's build a temporal lab first of all Now, a temporal lab we can build with standard components. I was testing out a sleeping bird. Actually, sleeping bird does work in the in the other side of the Stargate. Here we go. So this is a temporal lab. Fairly straightforward recipe. We'll build one of these, and we'll build a hopper and a chest. Let's see what I've got a need on me. And some gold, I think, and some iron. Let's just go and get some gold and iron fairly quickly. We can, we can also dump this stuff as well in here. I don't need trees. In fact, I don't need the ender pearls. They can disappear away. And we'll go and get some iron and some gold. Let's just take a stack of both. Gold's always a bit short, actually. Oh, we need some glass, which presumably we haven't got at the moment, and some redstone. Okay, one of each. So, one glass is here, one redstone is here. Now we should be able to build a temporal lab. That this is the first thing you do need to build. We're also going to build a hopper, so we need some more wood. I've got no shortage of wood around, by the way. Oh, that's a lot. Make two chests. Put the rest of the wood away. I don't think we need that for the time being. And then we'll make a hopper. We're only going to make one hopper. Like this. Then we'll go back into the TARDIS and put these down. Like somewhere. So what we'll do next is to build another little room. So we'll put the Let's put this into here now. So we built a library. Let's build a corridor, a corridor lift, corridor junction, a corridor. Let's make a long corridor. Okay, I'm not sure which is long. Take that out again. And we've got the library over here. I'm not sure I can do it this side. Let's have a try. Oh, yes, we can. Good. So now I've built a corridor with some side pieces on it and a a room control panel. Actually, let's go and change this to dismantle. If I right click this, right click, and then sneak right click to remove the room. So that should then disappear. Let's make a short card. Let's make a T junction. Come back over here, put that back in here. I'll have to change the mode of that if I don't forget. Right, a T junction. Let's make a that's a T junction four way. Okay, take this out of here. Now it's still in dismantle mode. I'm going to have to put that back into configuration corridor mode. I don't think it did delete the room. Never mind. We'll do it like this. So now we've got a four way junction here. I'm a bit confused about this. It says you can delete it. No, it wouldn't make much sense to do that at the moment. So with this four-way room, we're going to build another another room off it. So now we need to change this to rooms. I'll put that in there, of course. So we can create a big chamber. Let's create a, what have we got? A medium chamber or a library or a big chamber. We'll have a medium chamber like this. I'd like to put it here actually, but I can't, so I have to put it here. Actually, we'll put it here at the end, like that. Right click this, and we now have a medium chamber. And as you can see, you can see through this, 
So I go and have a look at here. That's the library over there. And on the other side you'd have the other one. So that's how that's how the sort of dimension works. So what I'm going to do in this lab in this room here now is to put down the chest that we have done. I'll put it down say here. And on top of the chest I'm going to put down the temporal laboratory like this. And on top of that I'm going to put down the hopper. Now of course that's a little bit more difficult because you've got to fly and shift at the same time, which is right, got it though. And inside here we're going to put in uh, let's put 16 blocks of each in. I'll take gold and I'm going to take iron like this. And I got to do the iron first and then the gold. Now what happens is that those then go into the temporal labor laboratory and when it's finished we will get items out here. And it, but it only processes when we're flying. I think I'm still flying, aren't I? So if I shift right click this, I think it turns it off and on. So at that moment it looks like it's off. Shift right click turns it on. So the next thing we have to do is fly. And flying is really rather dull actually. <laughs> I will be honest with you. So let's go back. Um, right now, we have to do certain things. So let's have a remember what we were doing first of all. So what have we got here? Flight controls. So the flight controls. This is the coordinate system. At the moment, it's set to eighty-three. It probably means we're going to land on the roof. So landing on the ground is what we want to do, and use landing pads if possible. We want to make a landing pad. We haven't got any yet. So that's set to night time. If I click that one, then it's set to daytime. If you go and have a look in one of the rooms in a minute, well, which we might do, we'll see that one. Now, what have we got here? This is the temporal primer. And here we've got this the front side. If I remember, this should be the front side. That will be the handbrake. And then we also need to make sure that the speed is as slow as possible. We want to turn around. Those are just flight controls for pressing. And that's the oh that's the relative coordinates. And here we have the screwdriver button. And here we have the zigzag plotter. Interesting. We actually press that. Ooh, not sure what to do there. It just changed the, the coordinates. That's the deletion control. Uh, more flight controls, X controls, uncoordinated flight. So we want uncoordinated flight, just drifting. Great. We're not going to fly anywhere, we're just going to basically get XP. So what else do we now need to do? So let's have a quick look and um, have a, yes, I'll just, I think it was the I don't need to change the coordinates. I think it was the temporal primer. Just a second, let me have a quick look here. I think I've got a, a few pictures which was screenshotted from that other one. So if I get to, to the flight control one, there we go, take off. Right, we've set our coordinates. We're going to stay where we are. Like that. Then we need to get engage or activate the temporal primer. So let's go and find the temporal primer. That's the first one. That's the button there. So we've activated the temporal primer. I think the other one is around the opposite side of this. And then we have to engage the helmet control. Or oh, maybe it's not actually. That's the room deletion control. Engage the helmet control is this one. And then the last one is to remove the brake, which is about the opposite the front door here, like this. And as you see, we're now starting to fly. And I think that was the speed, that was the speed lever, so that set it its lowest possible settings. And I think that means we've actually, oh, there's the button here I've got to press, you see? That one there. If I miss it, the part of the engine blows up. And you should be either going round this, which is a bit, a bit tedious, or we should be even able to see them through. That might want no. Ah, there's something lit up out of the back. Let's go around and get that. 
quickly and flick that button over there. I'll just quick look, have a look around these things here. In fact, if I right click this, it should say drifting in time vortex. That's the other, another thing I've got to go flick over, which is here. That's the other one of those. Oh, there's another button over there. Sometimes it's just a little bit tricky to see. Now to land, we press the handbrake and we start should be starting to land again. Now, what I'm going to do between this episode and the next episode is do a lot of flying to bring the level up. You see now here we've got the XP gauge. So we've now reached level one. level and these have all increased a little bit so I've now got five rooms energy's increased speed control is as slow as it can go I think 1.8 out of 50 and the shields are up hopefully if I open this door we're not in a bad place actually we're exactly where we were before and the, we've been turned around which is fantastic let's go and have a look inside again and see whether or not we actually managed to make anything in the temporal laboratory. We did, we managed to make 10 chronosteel ingots. Right, I'm going to say goodbye for now, and I'll see, hopefully see you next time, where we will do, um, between the episodes, I'm trying to go get this up here in terms of experience, and basically it just means running around this console, flicking the buttons and, and the buttons and levers until, We've got the higher levels. So until then, bye for now.